One of the most common terms you'll hear in the rehab and training space is this idea of core bracing, which is essentially a attempt at creating some level of proximal stability by creating pressure and contraction around the spine and core musculature. And a lot of the time, initially creating some level of central stability is important for most people. It provides a framework for the body to start to understand how to operate around a midpoint. That being said, you can't always be bracing, and it's in my opinion, nor should you be. Although creating this internal sense of stiffness can be helpful if we are gonna be moving load linearly, it doesn't necessarily equate to the real life dynamics of how force, stability, and load are dynamic in nature. This bracing mechanism enforces a sense of rigidity and stiffness into the body, and as a byproduct of that is going to inhibit fluid flow, organ movement, and smooth energy transfer throughout the body. Throughout this video, you'll be taken step by step as to how to create this initial midpoint of stability, but also learn how you can utilize it in a more dynamic way. Let's get into it. So for our first technique, this is gonna be the most important section to the video. So make sure to follow along as best as you can. And what we're gonna be focusing on here is improving the relationship between two different areas of our body. That is gonna be around our abdominal wall, as well as around our pelvis. So what you'll need to start with this one is a small bench. You can also do this on your couch. And if you want your head slightly elevated, you can use a pillow or a yoga block. And what we're gonna do initially is just get a assessment for where your breath cycle is initially at. This is what I typically use with my clients to begin with, just to get an idea as to their state. And it'll give you some feedback as to where you're potentially breathing into and where you're creating pressure from. So we're gonna start in this lying down position. We're gonna have our hands to the side. And all I want you to do here initially is just work through about four to five inhales and exhales and just try to take note of where you kind of feel pressure coming into. Do you feel like your lungs kind of quickly expand and maybe you go into a rib flare, maybe you get a little bit of tension around the neck or the traps? Or on the other side, maybe you notice that you're overly bracing or flexing kind of through these superficial muscles of the abdomen and you don't feel like you can get a full breath in. These are all things that we're gonna to wanna to take note of because depending on where your body is currently oriented is gonna be where you're gonna to have to feed more or less pressure into. So what we're gonna do is have the knees at about 90 degrees. You're gonna take your index finger and your middle finger just to the inside of your hip bone. And what we're gonna start with is creating some level of deep core pressure. So if we are overly bracing, we'll say through the rectus abdominis, then that's gonna immediately put me into that overly braced state. So something that we'll wanna be mindful of initially is actually letting some of this musculature first just kind of relax. The belly is gonna be more or less soft. And what we're gonna do with our fingers is create a little bit of initial pressure down. And we're gonna to try to create some contraction through one of our deeper core muscles known as our TVA. Now, if we do that well, and I pull and I contract my TVA, I should actually feel my fingers just slightly move apart or just move towards my hip bones a little bit. And then what we're gonna do is try to maintain a baseline of that deep core pressure as we start to go into the inhale. So you'll cycle through the inhale being mindful or even trying to imagine that the diaphragm is slowly descending down and we're getting a cylindrical building of pressure through our abdomen. So not only am I just breathing into my belly, I'm not just letting that kick out, but I'm also thinking about the lateral components as well as the lower back components here. And we're trying to really breathe in that 360 degree fashion. What this should ideally look like when you're going through it is that you should feel like pressure is building through the abdominal wall, but you don't feel like you're overly contracting the superficial muscles because we're being supported from the deeper core musculature. What we're trying to do here is not restrict the placement of where our organs are in space. We're actually trying to create some relative expansion, especially as we go through the inhalation. Once you feel like you have that initial pressure sequence down, you're starting to feel some diaphragm and core activation happening. What you can do to challenge this a little bit further is take your feet off while you maintain kind of that pressure in through the abdomen. I'd hold this for anywhere between 20 to about 30 seconds, 
just trying to maintain kind of a consistent breath cycle without feeling the need to overly flex the rectus abdominis primarily, and just trying to keep kind of a nice, even and symmetrical pressure. You can let the feet come down, take a short break, and repeat that for two to three sets. So as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, we want to have some allowance for our core to be responsive and reactive to our environment. If I'm always bracing everything, then I'm gonna be always operating from a place of rigidity, and it's not gonna allow this transference of energy to happen in my body. So what we're gonna work through is a lunge where we're gonna play with where we're taking the inhale and the exhale while we maintain some level of this pressure that we were just creating on the floor. So what this is gonna look like is you're gonna come into a lunge position and whatever leg I have in front, we're gonna have the opposing arm up. And what we're gonna work through is kind of a punch or a press at the same time that we're lunging down. So to start with, just get used to lunging and reaching with this arm. And imagine you're reaching in front and then you're pulling kind of an imaginary rope to take yourself back up. And just kind of get used to the dynamic of that. You can see I'm allowing my upper body to rotate relative to it. And then what we're gonna to begin to incorporate as we're going through this is a inhalation on the way down. I'm thinking about breathing into those compartments almost beneath my belly button filling all of that out, and then I'm almost drawing the breath up from there. As I stand up, that'll be my exhale, inhale as I come back down, and what I'm attempting to try to do here is get some spacing primarily on this right side. So I can also favor where it is that I'm breathing into. We can start with the symmetrical aspects of building pressure, but maybe in that first exercise you notice, hmm, I have a little bit of difficulty accessing maybe areas around the right oblique or the right lower back, or maybe that's an area that you're dealing with a little bit more compression. In that case, this exercise will be great because when you come down, you can start to send some pressure into there and you can allow for space to come into that area. And what we are starting to work on here is the interplay and the dynamics of how pressure can kind of move in and out of our body without us always having to flex as we're going through that. What I would suggest alongside doing the inhale to exhale is do a exhale to an inhale. And now just play with the difference in that. See if there's a, just a different feel of how everything kind of feels at the bottom relative to the top. You can focus more on connecting kind of to the core musculature at the bottom and then maintaining a baseline of that as you start to get into more of this expanded state as you're standing up. What I'd recommend here is work through this anywhere between about 12 to 15 reps, and you can go through about two to three sets on each side. So, so far in this video, we have worked on the specifics of what it kind of means to create some intra-abdominal pressure, kind of from the inside out, kind of getting rid of, or not overly emphasizing kind of the superficial tone to create this internal mechanism for us to kind of operate around in a more fluid way. We started to incorporate that through our reach and our pull in the lunge. And now what we're gonna work through is more of a responsive or reactive format to that lunge while we maintain a baseline of this pressure throughout. So for this one, you can make it as dynamic as you want it to be. Really what we're gonna be doing is coming into a single leg lunge. We're gonna be decelerating as we come forward. But what we're gonna be prioritizing as we go through this is that maintenance of that pressure that we were creating in the first and second exercise. So what you can do is come into that starting position as if we are in kind of in a half lunge here. You can start to build that pressure. I'm not just letting everything kind of distend and be loose, but again, I'm also not overly contracting and just hoping that my core <laughs> suspends me in space. We're allowing the pressure to work with our movement. And now that we have that baseline of pressure created, we're gonna take a half lunge forward. We'll let this back leg come off. And then I'm gonna come back to my starting position. And all I want you to do is kind of flow between these two positions, seeing if you can maintain that baseline of pressure kind of through your abdominal wall compartment. And what we're gonna do is just allow our T-spine to move relatively fluidly on top of this compartment. So this is where my stability is. This is gonna be what creates 
my lower back and spinal stability. And then I'm just allowing the thoracic spine to kind of articulate on top of that. Again, you can make this as dynamic as you want it to be. So the bigger the jump, the more power that you put into it, the more you have to decelerate as you're coming forward, the more the mechanics around the lower body are gonna be challenged, but also this deep core musculature that we've been working on throughout this video. Ideally, as you're working through this, and I'm coming in and out of that bottom position, I'm feeling things contract, but not stay contracted. So there's a momentary period where the core comes online, some of the superficial mu muscles come online to maintain and stabilize me in that position. But as I push away and then come back to my starting position, they're actually gonna switch off to some degree. The pressure will always be there, but the superficial tone is coming online, offline, online, offline and it's happening in a more responsive way. And over time, what this is gonna allow for is with each step that I take, with each motion that I go through, I'm arriving to and from what I call these points of stability. So I have stability statically, but I can still move and articulate myself dynamically. I would recommend working through this one anywhere between about 12 to 14 reps on each side. Just go at your own pace, you don't have to push it. But if you do want to increase how dynamic it is, then just start to cover more distance as you go to and from the starting position. So as you've come to learn throughout the course of this video, there's a lot more to creating spinal stability than just flexing your core as hard as you can, or just core function in general. I see far too many people just trying to squeeze their core or they get cued on just squeeze your core as hard as you can and just hoping that some stability gets created as a result of that. Although having the ability to create core tension and kind of squeeze the musculature around it is important, there's far more to it than just squeezing muscles as you have come to find out throughout the course of this video. If you're curious to learn more about the core dynamics and how that relates to the lower body, I'll leave a link in the description box below where you can find out more at my website. And if you wanna find out more about the specifics of how this pressure kind of all relates to things like our rib cage and starting to work on things like rib cage expansion and rotation, then you can go watch another video I did on that right here.